is a cold morning here in South Louisiana. Very different than our last fishing trip. When we're out here with Kevin Ford just, uh, man, I don't know, what, three days ago, it was warm. I mean, it got up to 74 that day, but since then, we've had a cold front come through. And today, it is really chilly. You got a brisk northeast wind blowing. But I'm out here with Joel. We're going to try and catch some fish today. Hopefully, speckled trout. Got a big event planned with friends and family coming over to watch the NFL playoffs. So today, we're going to do a catch and cook. We got to do the catch part to have the cook part. So hopefully, things work out for us today. And stick with us all the way to the end of the video, and you'll get to see how I'm going to cook these fish. Man, handling this trolling motor today is going to be a challenge because this wind is blowing us right into these rocks. And I'm starting with this mirror lip. Same thing I caught fish on on the last video out here. Joel is throwing a soft plastic. What are you throwing, a matrix? Ultraviolet. Ultraviolet colored matrix. Just really, really chilly today. And it's not going to warm up a ton. It's supposed to stay in the 50s today. Now, if you watch the video I shot with Kevin Ford, water temp was 61 degrees. Today it's 57, so it's falling four degrees. I'm hoping that kind of will keep those fish biting these stick baits a little bit longer in the day. Oh, there it is. Hit it right next to the boat, Joel. There he is, that's a keeper trout. He hit it right next to the boat. I don't know if he followed it or if he was just sitting there, but he is a keeper. Speckled trout. And he hit the front hook. Look at that. That's a good sign. Thanks, buddy. You're invited to dinner. You're the guest of honor. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. You ought to be throwing a holy jolly. There's a fish. There's a fish. All right. He's a keeper if we can get him in. All right, here we go. Another really solid speckled trout, about a 15 incher. Fish on, Joel. That's a keeper. That's a keeper. All right, good fish. Really nice fish. It's about a 17 incher, Joel. What would you say? You see, Joel was throwing an ultraviolet matrix shad. He made a switch to Holy Jolie. Was that your first cast? Third cast. <laughs> Third cast with the Holy Jolie. 17. 17 inch fish. Good job, Joel. Now that Holy Jolie is a bait that Joel designed. He didn't design the shape of the lure. It's a matrix shad. Chaz Champagne developed that. But Chaz made that color for Joel at Joel's request. And it's such a great bait. It really works well in clean water, particularly in the wintertime. So we don't need a ton of fish for our fish fry. Joel's got another fish. Get him, Joel. Get him, Joel. He looks nice. No way. Did he come off? No. No, no. That was a good fish. I mean, not that your last one wasn't a good fish, but I think that one might have been a little bit nicer. About the same. I'm going to hold you here just a second. Oh, Missed him. <laughs> so Joel is using... <laughs> I mean, you all know, if you watch my videos, you know what a fan I am of the Death Grip Jig Heads. I've banished Joel from using them at these rocks because he loses so many baits. He's using an alternative jig head, but he keeps missing fish. So now he's changing and he's putting on a Death, <laughs> death Grip, it looks like. Now fishing these jerk baits in this wind is a whole lot less comfortable. But I'll tell you this, this wind really helps. And ruffling that surface, it makes the fish a whole lot less spooky and much more inclined to hit these baits. Now the Armada is approaching for sure. It's a Friday. We got here early, so we beat kind of the rush, but they're coming now. Sunrise. There he is. Dude, what in the world? It's a fish, but he, man, he feels weird. He's got to be foul hooked. Yeah, something's going on. Oh, he's tail hooked. <laughs> I mean, in the tail. 
I mean, this fish could not be more hooked in the tail. Look at this. But we got him. <laughs> well, that tells you they're swatting at it. That was the strangest fighting fish ever. I mean, look at this. This guy's hooked right in the tail. I could tell it was something live on there, but man, it was fighting so weird. <laughs> look, look at that. Look. There he is. There he is. Please be 12 inches. We'd like to eat you. He is. Yeah, he's about 14 or so. Got the front hook and the back hook. Joel, we're going to be eating well on Sunday. Thanks to you. <laughs> Thanks to me. <laughs> there he is. Oh, stay on, stay on. Stay on. All right. Oh. <laughs> You're not big at all. I'm gonna have to go away to get a hook in the face. Another one that got the front hook. Man, don't cry over spilt milk. Let it go, man. Just let it go. Just let it go. Just, just sing the song from Frozen. I think we can get a few more, Joel. What you think? Sun's getting up, but it's not terrible yet. Oh, I just got smoked, Joel. Yeah, he was out too. I'd say a third of the way from the boat. Look, you see those rocks? Just be careful when you cast in that direction. Oh, there he is. Goodness. Boy. Oh, yeah, he's back on. I thought I lost him, but he's on there. There we go. There we go. All right. All he had was a front hook and not a lot of it. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Matrix Shad and by Fitzgerald Fishing and by Seto New Orleans and by Versamax Quartz and by Death Grip Jig Heads. There he is. There he is. Oh, man. Come on. You got some shoulders on you, don't you? I hope you're as big as you feel. What are you? Yeah, that's not a bad trout. That's not a bad trout. Oh, look at that. Lucky to get him. It's a good 17 inch, Joel. It might match the one you caught. Let's see. Let's see how big you are. 17 and a half inches. Man, I just love this jerk bait fishing. It's just, it's really kind of like the highlight of my winter. Every year, these fish hit these jerk baits when these water temps are in the 50s. Sometimes I do it along these rocks, sometimes I do it in coves. But right now it's January. Yeah, as we get more into February, I'll transition more to top waters, but also still throwing these jerk baits. And I love them both almost equally. I gotta give top waters just a little bit of an edge. But man, this is just, this is a very close second. I love it. The, uh, you know what I bet the problem is with you is boat location. I bet if you were up here, because I've got I've got a number of hits, you know, fairly close to the boat. And you really can't fish that. Right. Right. Let's just get off a little bit. Just for kicks. Just to see. Fish? He's little. He's very little. He might not. You sure you got something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's really ugly. That's a keeper. That, Joel, that was a keeper. Why'd you lose him? I don't know. He came 
Okay, so I've been whacking the speckle trout today, throwing twitch baits. And Joel has really struggled. In fact, well, he just lost that fish on a twitch bait. But prior to that, what, you had one other bite? One other bite. That's it. So what we figured out was it's because of the angle that he's fishing. I got an 18-foot boat. We're having a troll almost perpendicular to the rocks because the wind is so strong. So Joel's a lot closer to the rocks than I am. So he's throwing at a much different angle. And that's definitely why I'm, why I'm getting more bites. I kind of moved this off a little bit and almost immediately he hooked one. Now he lost it. <laughs> but just kind of goes to show you, if one guy on the boat is catching another guy isn't, it may not be because of skill. Although in this case it may be. <laughs> but really I think, it's, I think it's angle. I think if we can get off a little bit, get off these rocks, I think Joel will catch a few more. Or at least that's my working hypothesis. We'll see if it becomes a theory. And I got to tell you, it was windy this morning. <laughs> but man, it's windy now. Bite? No, I almost went in. Joel almost fell in. Yeah, that would have uh, definitely ruined the day. However, it would have made the video. <laughs> I would have pulled you back in, but I would have made sure the cameras were running. All right, Joel claims he got another bite, but he keeps losing them, so I'm not uh, sure he's got one. He is definitely uh, <laughs> not horsing that fish. Come on, Joel, I'm pulling for you. If for no other reason than I, I want to eat him. Put that fish in the boat. Okay, good good fish. There you go. All right. Joel, we changed your angle and it definitely changed yep. your, your outcome. There you go, you're trying to lose him. <laughs> it's about a 15 inch, a really solid speckled trout. All right, here we go. All right, for doing this jerkbait fishing, it's extremely important that you use the proper rod. I'm telling you, if you don't use the right rod, you're gonna lose more fish than you get in the boat. It's just paramount, believe me. So there's two routes you can go. If you're a braid person, like I am, you generally want to fish a light powered rod. You can get away with medium light, but don't go with medium or high or anything like that. If you're a mono guy, you can go with medium. In fact, you're better off with medium. Now Joel today threw my Fitzgerald seven foot two inch medium powered rod. It's loaded with 15 pound mono. And this, this rod works exceptionally well. Also a very, very good topwater rod as well. Now I'm generally a braid guy. I throw braid, I like the sensitivity of it. So what I go with is a light powered rod. This is a castaway skeleton. I've had this rod for a long time. The braid gives you enough sensitivity and enough reaction to be able to set that hook and bury those hooks into the fish's flesh but the light power nature of this rod has a lot of give so once that fish is hooked up you know how it is it's so easy for those fish to throw these hard plastic baits if you don't have a rod with some give you're gonna lose just a ton of fish now <laughs> look if you do fish braid with the jerk bait and you tie directly to the jerk bait not only will you get fewer bites it's gonna drive you crazy because that braid's gonna get wrapped around the hooks happens all the time you gotta tie on a leader i've got on right here a 30 pound fluoro leader now this is heavy i mean that's heavy now a lot of times that knot that double uni knot where you tie your braid to your fluoro will get stuck in the rod guide and it's a big pain in the butt there are some thinner knots there's fg knot alberto knot uh, i've got a lot of confidence in this double uni so i'll just kind of deal with the fact that that knot gets stuck on the rod guide but you've got to have You've got to have that leader, so, so important. Now, when you're fishing just straight mono, and Joel is a straight mono guy, he loves mono, you don't have to worry about that. I mean, I'll tell you, that is nice. You can reel down right to this bait. You don't have to worry about that not getting stuck or anything, but I like the sensitivity of braids. It's what I'm used to, it's what I like. But these are both great options. Uh, go with what works for you, but don't ever fish anything heavier than a medium with mono or a medium light with braid. All right, the catch portion of this was a definite success. Man, it's just so much more fun fishing when you're catching fish for a purpose. When you're having a big fish fry or whatever, having a bunch of people over, 
It makes each fish so much more meaningful. You're so glad when you catch them. So the next part of this video is the cook portion. First, we gotta clean these fish up. But after that, man, hopefully the cook and eating is as much fun as the catching was. But I don't know if that's even possible. All right, it's Sunday. We caught these fish on Friday. I filleted them right when we got home. And if you're looking for a great way to fillet speckle trout, I'll link to that right here. It's absolutely the best way to fillet these fish. You get through them in no time and people think you waste meat. You don't, trust me, you don't. It's very, very efficient. So the cleaning is already done and now the fun part. I like to marinate my fish a lot of times. I don't always do it. If I'm in a rush, I don't worry about it, but if I've got the opportunity to, it definitely changes the flavor of those fish, makes them even tastier. I especially like to do that when I've got some bigger fillets. If I've got a bunch of 12 inch speckled trout, I generally don't bother because they're so good on their own. But if you got some bigger fish fillets, this is a good thing to do. So I'm gonna show you the technique. All right, this requires three ingredients, that's all. Piece of cake and you probably got them in your fridge. First is hot sauce. Second is pickle juice. And the third, yellow mustard. So as you can see, I've got my fillets in a Ziploc bag, packed in ice, that's how I store them. And again, if you don't know why, I'll link to that video. It's a very, very important technique for keeping your fish tasting the best that they possibly can. All right, so in this bag, I've got some really big fillets and some smaller fillets. A fillet like this, that's gonna make a really, really nice piece of fried fish. So I don't do anything to this. I've got some bigger fillets, like this one. That's kind of meaty. Nobody wants to bite into a giant fish fillet when they're fried. So I like to kind of cut these a little bit thinner. So I'll generally make a horizontal cut to make the fillets much thinner. And then sometimes I'll even cut these into smaller pieces just to help them carry more of the fish fry. That should be good. All right, so the only kind of pickle juice I have is actually bread and butter pickles. <laughs> I wouldn't say that this is ideal, probably just straight dill pickle juice would be better, but I've used this a number of times and it's really fine. So I'm gonna pour some of this in here, being sure to keep my pickles in the jar. And I wanna keep enough juice in there to keep my pickles nice and moist. All right, next is just some straight old cheap yellow mustard. Don't need to worry about getting any fancy brown mustards or anything like that. Although it's not bad if you have that. Now you squirt a good amount of this in there. And then finally, some hot sauce. I like crystal because it actually adds a lot of flavor without adding a ton of heat. Put however much you like. Whatever you think's appropriate. That's what makes cooking fun. All right, pull your sleeves up. And just go ahead and dig in and mix it all up. I gotta tell you this smells absolutely incredible. It's kind of a weird combination, the pickle juice, mustard, and hot sauce, but man, it's just, there's something magical about it. It smells really, really good. And you definitely wanna mix it up well so that every filet gets a lot of the marinade on it. All right, so now I'm gonna stick these in my fridge, let them marinate, let that flavor seep into the meat for a few hours. The Saints play about 345. I plan on having the fish good and hot about 315 so everybody can feast right before the game. Can't wait. Who that? All right, I like to change up my fish fry constantly. I use a different type every single time I fry. Right now I'm using the Louisiana Seasoned Crispy Fish Fry. This is the one in the blue bottle. They also make one in a yellow bottle and, and that one's good as well. Generally what I like the most is mixing this with the yellow one. Also like Zatarans, various brands. Just like to mix it up so it's not the same thing every time. But this one's really good. So go ahead and add a generous amount to a tray. 
Now I do all this on the tailgate of my pickup. It's because it's very close to my fryer. Kind of serves as a as a table. I just put a few fillets in. And then cover them with the fry. Now you don't want to do this ahead of time. You want to batter the fish very soon before you put them in the hot grease. Believe it or not, it actually makes the fry stick a whole lot better. If you batter them an hour ahead or something like that, the fry does not stick as well as it should. It seems counterintuitive, but it's just the way it is. All right, so when frying fish, temperature is everything. You want to fry your fish between 325 and 375. 350, kind of that perfect zone. Fortunately, this fryer has a temperature gauge on it, tells me when the oil is right. Now, I would highly encourage you, if you can afford it at all, to get a commercial fryer. The reason these things are so good is because the volume of oil. This thing takes five gallons of oil. So once it gets hot, that oil stays hot. You put your fish in there, it doesn't change the temperature at all. So you're staying around that 325, 350 range on your temperature and your fish come out really, really crispy, just like you get in any fine restaurant. All right, first batch is going in the grease. You can really overload these baskets because of the volume of oil that's in here. Man, it's times like this, I always think, you know what, my neighbors really have to hate me. I mean, you ought to smell these fried fish right now. It smells like heaven around here. So how do you know when your fried fish are done? Generally, they'll float. You can also look at the color. These are getting really, really close. That's the color I like them golden brown. You let them drain just a minute. You dump them on the paper towels. All right, so the best part of being the one who actually cooks the fish is you get to be the first one to taste the fish. I gotta tell you that marinade adds such a unique flavor to this fish. It is just, it's delicious. Fried fish is never not good. <laughs> But this is exceptionally good. Mm. Alright, well if you like the video, make sure to subscribe to Marshman Masson on YouTube. And also leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell us what your favorite way to fry fish is. What do you like to do? And until next time, if we don't see you out in the marsh or eating fried fish, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.